Welcome back, everybody. A new field of research looks at how we live our lives now and how it will impact future generations. The study is called Epigenetics, and it's profiled in a new book by best-selling author Judith Fenlayson called You Are What Your Grandparents Ate, and Judith joins me now. This is fascinating stuff, and I know we just have a few minutes, but just explain the concept of epigenetics for us. Well, if maybe I can give you a couple of examples. Great. And the first one would be a Swedish epidemiologist who decided to look at the community that he grew up in. He discovered that the grandparents of male children were more likely to have grandsons who would die young if they had eaten too much around the time of puberty. What? And that's significant <laughs> because that's when their sperm cells were forming. Wow. He also then went back and took another look and found that if the grandmothers had been nutrient deprived, malnourished, while they were pregnant, those granddaughters uh, would be more likely to die young. So that's what was happening. We had 20, 30 years of epidemiological studies turning up these very odd things and links between poor nutrition and higher rates of chronic disease. Then the science of epigenetics came onto the scene and we began to be able to see how the what happened. And how it happens is that in situations like when the sperm cells are forming or when the eggs are forming, we forget that a baby girl is born with all of her eggs. Mm -hmm. So whatever happened to her mother while she was pregnant had a significant impact on how those eggs developed. So those cells, those reproductive cells, retain memories of those negative experiences and that's epigenetics. And that so through the whole process of cell di differentiation, whereby the fertilized egg becomes a baby at the end, those little memories uh, are transmitted. Echo back. Yes. And we tend to think of our genetics as what <clears throat> our parents. Do you have a you know immediate family member with X, Y, or Z? But it's not only your grandparents, but sometimes even your ancient relatives? We don't, we, we, we've gone back as far as grandparents, but we do know from some areas that have been historically malnourished, uh, say famine studies of China and India, that people are much more susceptible to things like type 2 diabetes because of generations of malnourishment. So a pregnant woman uh, who comes from a long history of malnourishment, i.e. her mother was malnourished, mm -hmm, her mm -hmm. grandmother was malnourished, simply doesn't have the physical reserves to um, provide for a developing baby. So what do we do about this? Is there anything we can do? There's a lot we can do. And uh, to start, the most effective thing we can do is to make sure that pregnant women and young children, the first thousand days of development from the moment you are conceived, have the most impact on your long-term health in terms of chronic disease. So nurturing pre uh, pregnant women and young mm -hmm. children is really crucial. Um, but for each of us, we also know from epigenetics that even small changes, like in exercising more, improving diet, we have studies that show that even um, uh, targeting with particular nutrients can change the transmission of vulnerabilities through at least two generations of offspring. So just improve your diet, avoid processed foods, the problem we have in North America is three generations of people right, right. who are chronically malnourished because they are eating nutrient poor, calorie rich food and they just don't have enough nutrients and that is contributing to and, and the interesting thing about that is that we normally think of that okay well that's our own health choice or you know we're we're only affecting our own health but what I hear you saying is, no, that's cascading down to generations after you. Absolutely. My grandchildren will be affected by how I conduct myself. Absolutely. That, 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 is, that is true. And so the responsibility now is to start taking care of yourself because it isn't just you. It's your children and your children's children. And the other thing I want to say is that men 
play a role in this as well. And as we begin to look more and more at this subject, we're seeing that uh, a lot of vulnerabilities are transmitted through the male line and through sperm. So when men don't eat well, when they smoke, uh, when they uh, drink too much alcohol, that has an impact that affects uh, their, their offspring and their offspring's offspring as well. That is fascinating stuff. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Judith will be at Town Hall Seattle with Dr. Kent Thornburg from Oregon Health and Science University, who's at the forefront of the research included in Judith's book. The event is tonight at 7.30 at the Reading Room in Seattle. Don't miss it, it's truly fascinating stuff. After the break, a new program at the UW focused on improving accessibility for people with physical challenges through the use of artificial intelligence. We'll dive into that next.